and today we're going to be exploring San Francisco. I can't wait to show you guys all these cool hidden gems and places to see. I'm heading out now and I'll see you guys soon. Just got some coffee from Sight Glass Coffee, and now we're going to be walking around San Francisco and just exploring more of the sights. absolutely beautiful day in San Francisco. The traffic was a little bit insane, but it was worth it. I look like a 90s dad, but that's okay. I'm really excited for this adventure today and to just get out of the house and breathe and be a person, think about life. Oh wait, we're... <laughs> I Shoot. hit the wrong side. That's going in. <laughs> we're gonna like hit the town. Okay, I swear I, I wasn't. I I wasn't trying to troll you. We are gonna explore the city as if we've never seen it before, find some hidden magic. <laughs> what are we doing? Okay, so now we are going to be riding around San Francisco on these epic electric powered lift bikes. And I'm so excited! Woo! <laughs> Honestly, this is an amazing way to experience the city. So if you guys have never been to San Francisco before, I highly recommend taking a look at these like electric bikes because especially to power you up those hills, it's so much easier and it's a really fun way to explore the city and you can see so many more sites. Super fun. It feels so amazing to be back in San Francisco and the energy of San Francisco is so alive and people are smiling and just there is this vibrancy to the city that I haven't seen in quite some time and it feels amazing to have just to just feel the city come alive again. This is so beautiful. So this is called Balmy Alley in San Francisco. And Jesse, any fun facts about Balmy Alley? It's one of many uh, projects that is just really run by the local community. These alleys, you'll see Balmy is probably, you know, one of the more well-known. You'll see it tagged on Instagram or all over social media. There's dozens, if not more, of these alleys spread out throughout the community here in the Mission, and really it's just up to the, you know, local artists and people to that live here come out and do art, and just really a space for people to gather. Kind of, you see people live right up against these, so it's really like a community neighborhood spot, and as long as you you know, I think people are respectful and not leaving trash or any kind of, you know, just being respectful of the space. I think the community really loves to show off what it can do. It is so bright, it feels like my eyeballs are burning out of my face. <laughs> Alrighty, so we are actually in the marina and normally I am never in the marina, so even when I lived in San Francisco for four years, I would never go to the marina. So today we are expanding our horizons and we're gonna be exploring some scenic sites and I'm super excited to take you guys with me. And now we're going to be getting some food.
good morning. We just got done eating our sandwiches from Luca. Absolutely incredible. Highly recommend that deli. It's been around for so long. I think at least 50 years. Don't quote me on that. I'll have to look that up. But we are currently at Fort Mason. I'm so excited to show you all that scenic journey. I want to be honest and direct about the current situation happening in San Francisco because I feel that it's important to evaluate the circumstances while being solutions focused and understanding that if we don't look at things with a critical eye, how can we continue to move forward and progress in society? As someone who lived in San Francisco for four years and then the East Bay for two, it's really shocking what happened to San Francisco and I literally watched that city transform in a few years. It's really dirty. It's dirtier than dirty for a city because cities are dirty. That's just what happens when you're in a city environment. Cities aren't gonna be like as clean as Irvine, California, right? But I think that there's a threshold here and what's really disappointing about San Francisco is they have these big uh, public green restrooms with like this sliding door thing. The issue with those is that they close them down in the evening time and I remember I was commuting on BART to work and early in the morning and I had to go to the bathroom so bad and we were stuck. I was scrambling to get to the bathroom and I tried to open the public restroom and it was flipping closed and I had to literally sprint. I nearly had an accident. I had to sprint all the way to the ferry building at the Embarcadero, which was so far from Montgomery Station all the way to the ferry building. I was like not pleased at all and I made a mad dash and I was able to make it in time. But what's really upsetting is that San Francisco doesn't fix their bathroom problem. Like have more public restrooms available 24 seven around the clock. Not only will this help the drunk people in the streets who like need to use the bathroom because they're coming back from the bars, but also the homeless people, the people who are unhoused. We need to have more public restrooms. We need to have more public restrooms. It's just like that will be the first step and then also making sure that there are way more affordable housing units And that can be micro studios or whatever, but we got to get people into apartments people a lot of times live paycheck to paycheck and the answer isn't just a mass exodus to austin texas that is not the answer because that just moves the problem from one city to another city the answer is to address the problems in the local area of which they're happening and there isn't enough housing for the working class and the lower middle class there just isn't enough there's all these like luxury apartments like what is that like what about normal people it's critical for the laborial ecosystem to have housing to accommodate our emt our firefighters, our teachers, our teachers, you guys. Okay, teachers are not balling out like the tech workers. I used to visit New York a lot of times for work and I noticed that you can get way more for your money in New York City, New York City, than you can in San Francisco. Also, San Francisco is not very dog friendly. I don't care what anyone tries to say in this comment section. I have a dog. I could not find housing in San Francisco without trying to register him as a fake service dog. And I'm not going to register my dog as a fake emotional support animal. I'm just not gonna do that. <laughs> Please understand that I'm not trying to put the entire city down But I do think that it's important to objectively look at something with a critical eye So that way we can evaluate what's working what's not working and then problem solve What's embarrassing is that we have some of the best and brightest in Silicon Valley in San Francisco Yet for some reason we are not able to fix this issue and it's only gotten worse This is an issue about the community in which we live in and I care deeply about improving our community and improving our space It makes me sad to see that so many people so many regular folks are being driven out or forced to move farther away from where they grew up and were raised and the answer is not to just move away <laughs> also don't forget some people have kids they got kids enrolled in certain school districts and they might have joint custody 50% of people get divorced 
we got to keep that in mind there. Not everybody has the resources to relocate far away. What's sad is that people are oftentimes one to two paychecks away from being homeless. And I think that it's sad that there's a lack of compassion for the unhoused people. And I understand that it can be scary and freaky if someone is following you or screaming at you. And there are people who have a drug induced psychosis. I think in order to help better address this problem, we are going to have to look at homeless people, unhoused people with a more human and empathetic perspective and attitude. And it's not just a problem that we want to throw in a trash can. These are human beings. These are real people and not everyone just doesn't want to work. I think it's ludicrous when people say, oh, we'll just get a job. Like, okay, well, it's not that simple because you need to have a driver's license. You need to have an address. And once you don't have an address, how are you supposed to apply for jobs? How are they? What? <laughs> in order to get an ID, you need to have an address and you don't have an apartment and you don't have a job. How are you going to get any of these things? So it's like once you fall into that, it is so hard to crawl out of it. And I do think that we could have have more resources available. Again, I don't have all the answers. I'm just a person speculating, but I do think that we need to do better. I love San Francisco and it makes me so sad to see what has continued to happen to this society. I'm really curious to know what you guys think one would be some solutions to help this problem. Please let me know in the comments. I would love to hear your thoughts and maybe we can crowdsource some ideas, but I just, sometimes I feel so helpless and it's like, I want to get involved and I don't know how, I don't know how to help this situation, but I do know that one person can make a difference. And if we all bend together, we can make a difference. Yeah. <laughs>